is is I, I said on Twitter like is you got to you, you got to have some sort of real score with these games like a real place where the game was decided and not just a place where you know not just that end score because you can fool people if you didn't watch the game you know if you didn't suffer through it like us good Bears fans did you know you you would think that well, twenty four seventeen wasn't that bad, but you know it it was that bad. It was much worse. It was twenty four three at uh, at the worst, and that was pretty much what the game was. It was a, a an offense that doesn't function against a team that really wasn't that intimidating. The Tennessee's not an intimidating team. They match up pretty well with the Bears. They their their defense is in the lower third of the league, came into the, this game in the lower third of the league with the rankings in regards to stopping the run and the pass. They, you know, they give up numbers and they, they wound up doing it to the Bears today, mostly in garbage time, but they give up numbers. They let you move up and down the field. Uh, their offense, uh, they don't have a, you know, a, a real killer at quarterback. Uh, Tannehill revived his career, Ryan Tannehill, uh, revives his career in Tennessee, but he's still a marginal quarterback in in all and um you know in every sense you know he's not a franchise guy he's not a killer, and the Bears showed him to the, to be that today, although they let they let a couple of good plays by you know mostly because of uh you know the physicality of their top receiver AJ Brown Titans. A.J. Brown is, is just a hard guy to bring down, and he proved to be that in a couple of plays for the Bears. Uh, a lot of yards after catch that he provided for himself today and you know, got one got one score in the end zone. And um, But when you think of the Titans, the, the thing that you most think about is their you know, all-pro running back. You know, Many think the best running back in the league, uh, Derrick Henry, just a, a monster guy, uh, can get 200 yards on you at any time. But he only got 68 yards today. Uh, one of his, you know, one of it's going to be one of his uh, worst performances of the year yardage wise. He didn't score. The Bears really did a great job in containing him today. You know, and apart from a couple plays, he wasn't a factor really in this game. So you know, when you look at the totality of the performance of the Bears defense today, I would say it was one of their better performances of the year. It may go down as one of their best performances of the year because they contained one of the top weapons in the league. They didn't allow themselves to be outgunned in this game. It's just that you know the Titans came into this game with a super soaker, and the Bears had you know one of them little one of the little water pistols, you know. They barely squared out anything. It's like there's no firepower. You can't match. You know they only gave up two touchdowns. They, uh, you know, you had the end, the the fumble uh, play that led to a touchdown for Tennessee's defense that gave them the 24. You know, so three touchdowns and it's in the field goal. Bears end up scoring like again, like I said, two touchdowns in the fourth quarter after basically nothing in the first three quarters, and you know. Just again, a bad start. You know, inconsistent, uh, inconsistent. Uh, you know, execution. You know, your your quarterback is not getting protection. The patchwork offensive line being put together with tape and and gum. You know, is it's really just though know, sad that we're asking so little. <laughs> we're, we're not at, we're asking so little at this point for this offense. It's like. Just give us something, man. Give us, you know, give us something that that just give us that saltine that'll make us feel like, you know, we're eating a steak. You know, what I mean, because you know we can't even get that. You know, we, we, we're out here in the, the dying of the desert, man, dying of thirst, uh, of you know, trying to see some type of uh, mirage, some type of, of watering hole. That could, that could give us, uh, you know, sustenance for, for, you know, from this for with this offense, man. They they can't lead us to nothing, man. They can't lead us to any water, and you know, now we're in the middle of this season, five and four. You know, a good the start happened, five and one, and you know, of course, most of us didn't trust it. We didn't we didn't have reason to trust it. There still was so many questions up in the air, 
And it's just unfortunate that all those questions that we had have to come back and slap us in the face. You know, everything that we, you know, that we feared coming that was going to come from this team has come and and it's just like backed up, uh, like a backup, backed up toilet. You know, it's just leaving all type of filth in in, in our face now. And there's no, there's no, you know, there's really no way out of this. I, I don't see, you know, people are talk, people again to talk about Mitch. It's like, well, Mitch is not, Mitch is not even going to give you 300 yards. At least, uh, you know, foes give you 300 yards. Again, most of it was a garbage time, but Mitch is not going to give you 300 yards. Mitch wasn't even available to play today. So it's like, you know, you put him out there for one play, against the saints and he gets hurt and it's like you know again how reliable is he and you know he's a type of guy who if he you have to have him for him to have a 300 yard day he has to have everything working right for him and the bears have nothing working for them they have no type of of, a framework no type of uh, you no know, foundation for success on offense that's available for any quarterback to really play at their best right now. Whether you're talking about Trubisky, you know, somehow growing into the position, which is what we're still asking for him to do in year three, or if you're talking about Foles maximizing himself and becoming that quarterback who can, we've seen can lead you to a championship, but again, he's another guy who everything has to be working right for him to get in that hot streak that he that he can get in at his best. And when you know he's shown he's shown since he took over the job that when he doesn't have proper blocking in front of him, when things aren't clicking, when the there isn't rhythm uh, a, a certain kind of rhythm to the offense, then he's not going to do much for you either, not over the entire course of the game. He'll still have again drives where he can get he can get a few throws off, and the Bears have receivers enough. They have enough receiving talent where they can make the plays that they need to make. But again, that's that's doing it in the face of defenses that know that pretty much know at this point that your only threat to them, that the Bears' only threat to them is through the air because you can't run the ball because you don't have a, a an offensive line that's worth a damn. And it's just is again. It goes back to the offensive line. Lewis Riddick, uh, one of the best guys at ESPN, the football analysis, he said on Twitter today, "Man, everything starts with the offensive line in the NFL. Everything, because if you can't you can't block, you have to control the line of scrimmage. If you can't block, uh, the defenses, defenses, they they feel that their best." threat to you they're, the threat that they're going to build up before anything is the pass rush so you have to block that you have to also run with the ball you have to run with the ball to set up play actions to make your to make your uh your pass game more credible and to keep defenses from just putting eight or nine players in the box right in front of you and just like say again blitzing you or you know, just doing whatever does take up the middle of the field. You have to have the middle of the field open to you to make plays as well. That's important in football. So it's like the Bears, they're, they're, they're really held hostage. Their offense is held hostage every week to defenses because they don't have to respect the run at all. They could just really do whatever they want at any time. They could gear up blitzes. They could attack from whatever angles they want to because they know that whatever angle they ta- they attack on the offensive line, any of those five spots, they have a person in those five spots who is underperforming at their job. Either they're just uh, – either they're – they may have been – they may have been there a long time like uh, Charles Leno and they're just weak. Or in the case of uh, like about two or three of the positions today, you have guys in there who haven't started before in the NFL. You're talking about first time put starters, and these guys are, you know, not even top ranked college guys who've come into the league. These guys are seventh round 
uh, picks and stuff like that, like Arlington Hanbright, I think. I, I'm, I think that's his name. That's one of the guys who started today who never started before. So, and, and I'm going to get into that in a little bit in regards to uh, my critique of uh, the leadership on the on the team, uh, in particular, Ryan Pace. But, uh, yeah, with, uh, Drew, my man Drew, got a question for me up here. I'm going to look at that. Let's see. Is there a lack of office success under this, his watch enough to get Pace fired after this year? Is Nagy coaching for a job moving forward? Great question, man, and and that again, that's I, I'll just get to it right now, then, man. Look, people, you if you follow the game on Twitter like I do, uh, in, in in live time, you will notice today that more calls for pace face firing and Nagy's firing, they're building up, man, more and more, and you know the. You're coming mostly from fans, but also from members of the media too. Not necessarily the beat pit uh, writers on the team. They can't do that stuff because they have to interact with these guys. So they're not going to be calling for it. But, you know, fans in the media, you know, like uh, Michael Wilbon and people like that, they're calling, (laughs) they're openly calling for these guys to lose their job now. And, um, you know, one guy, I forget who who tweeted, one guy tweeted, you know, would you, would you call for them to lose their job? Uh, Pace and and Nagy call for them to lose their job uh, after today. And I put, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, they they are they are both worthy of being fired today. If I was the owner of the Bears, you know, God willing, I would fire them both. And um, and it's not just it's not just like you know, just a, a reactionary thing. It's something that build up that's built up over time and is based in their inability, you know, their shared responsibility that comes with not building on not only not building that foundation again for success on offense, but just failing at every turn and trying to rectify it. It's it's sad, man. You know, really Pace to that degree, pace deserves uh, to be canned above, you know, quicker than anybody. He deserves his firing above all. He deserves it uh, to be fired first because, again, he's the general manager. He's the architect of the team. And he, like I say, he's failed completely to build a t- an offensive line that has credible starters or credible backups to fill in for those starters. Once you lose a Kyle Long prematurely in his career, once you lose, you know, uh, you know, you know, like I said, when, once once a guy like Leno doesn't fall doesn't fall in in line or doesn't blossom into a uh, elite or even a, a standout left tackle, once you have, you know. Uh, Cody uh, Whitehair, who was struggling and you know to and, and to grow into what you expected him to be, you know you don't have any options beyond that. You fill in you fill in spots with con- converted uh, defensive linemen like Rashad Coward, who was not an NFL offensive lineman by any means. You bring in the person from you bring in castoffs from other teams like Jermaine and Freddie, who is just not working. And you know you you don't go after people like Quentin Spain, who is an All Pro guy from uh, Buffalo, who was available, free agent, completely available a couple weeks ago. You let him get picked up by Cincinnati, who picked him up in time to uh, play him, plug him in and play him with no preparation against this Tennessee team last week. He was he he made his first start for ten uh, for Cincinnati last week against Tennessee and got them a win. Helped get them a win. You know he, that guy should have been on the Bears last week. He should have been working his second game with the Bears and helping the Bears get a win this week against Tennessee. But you don't you don't do that because you're inept or you just are too comfortable in what you, and you're you're too comfortable in what you have for some reason you, which means you're too comfortable in your job which means that you're not going to progress at all you're already a young guy who 
you know, thinks he knows too much, apparently, you know, and you you torpedo the near future of this team with one of the worst quarterback draft picks in in modern history and with maybe the history, complete history of the NFL draft picking Trubisky. You, you know, it, of course we you know we all know about Trubisky. We all can, you know, we've all gone over that time and time again, but you know, that's a fireball offense in and of itself. You know, he's, he's going to lose his, he's going to lose his job eventually because of that, whether he loses it at the end of this year or anytime sooner. Those really, oh, that really should be the only uh, timeline we're talking about here. It's either got to be at the end of this year, or you know, sometime sooner than that. You know, and that's it, uh, unless the Bears somehow do some type of Disney turnaround and, and become, you know, the '85 Bears like that, or even the '06 Bears, you know, and, and somehow make a Super Bowl. He has to lose his job. Ryan Pace has to lose his job by this coming January. He has to be out the door. Nagy, you know, I I I would be fine with him losing the job. I'm on record as saying that as well. The only thing that I will give him as a safe passage is that he hasn't had a quarterback worth for damn. He hasn't had a quarterback, you know, screw up. Forget about whatever whatever quarterbacks fit his system, which really isn't his system. It's uh, you know, um, Andy Reid's system. But whatever you know, system that he that he's running that he wants his quarterback to abide by, you know, forget all that. You know, they they tried that in getting uh, you know, getting foes, and they thought that he would be a help in that manner. He hasn't been. But beyond that, you have to have a quarterback who is who has the talent, the capability to be elite, who has the who is going to be able to run with these with these young boys who are changing the game literally week to week. You have a class of quarterbacks in the NFL right now who are changing the game. And the Bears in 2017 had their shot at being one of the first teams to pick from that class. They were at the front of the line at number three in the draft. They traded up to number two in the draft. And, you know, they had a, a whole buffet out there in front of them. They had lobster. They had prime rib. They had steak, you know, whatever type of cuts you want, man, prime cuts, all that in front of them, man. And they went with the damn mystery meat. They went with, uh, the, they went with the, the surprise stew. You know, they went with something that they had no idea what was in the, in the mix. Like it, this, the big bubbling pot that just, you know, looked grayish and blobbish. And, and they just was like, you know, there's got to be something in there that t- that's tasty. I, I, I'm, I'm going to take my chances with that instead of getting a damn uh, New York, New, <laughs> New York cut in a, uh, in Deshaun Watson or, you know, a, a beautiful T-bone in uh, Patrick Mahomes. You know, they went with the mystery meat and and they got what they deserve from that, from that. And Pace hasn't got what he deserved yet, but he's going to. And he, and, you know, like I said, everything, everything that we see today that frustrates us, that infuriates us, it comes from his lack of decision-making his indecision, his bad decision. And he deserves to be fired. He deserves to lose his job, no doubt. And um, like I say, Maggie is he's tied into him, unfortunately, because he's his his he's his hire. He you no, know, and uh, you know, that's that's just bad luck. But you know, Maggie got a football, a head coaching football job out of it, and you know, he wasn't gonna not uh he wasn't going to turn that down. He, he didn't foresee that uh, Pace wasn't going to be able to build the rest of this team, right? Even though, you know, you he did see him draft uh, Trubisky instead of the court, uh, the quarterbacks in 2017 draft. Uh, but, you know, but I could, I would be, I couldn't, 
deal with Nagy staying for another year and quarterbacking maybe an elite quarterback who comes out of the 21 draft. That's that's the thing. Like the 2021 draft, the upcoming uh college draft uh should be loaded with quarterbacks again, uh maybe even more so than the 2017 draft and any draft in recent memory. And there may be as many as six quarterbacks who are drafted in the first round, uh, some reports are saying. So, you know, you have quarterbacks like Trey Lance from uh, North Dakota State, Justin Fields, Ohio State. And, of course, uh, the the crown jewel looks like is uh, Trevor Lawrence of Clemson. The Bears may not be that bad where they're going to be in the mix for a Lawrence or maybe even the Fields. But uh, you know, if you ask uh, our guys, uh, Ryan Bukovsky and uh, Ken Davis uh, from the da- that Davis show, Ryan, of course, uh, does our Bears writing. You know, they love Lance from uh, North Dakota State, and he's a guy who, you know, from the little I've seen of him, he, he's I, I would agree. You know, he's pretty impressive, and he could be available to where the Bears likely would be, which as of now is looking to be somewhere in the middle of the first round. Cause again, they're like we said, they're falling off the, the playoff precipice. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll wrap up this bears talk in a minute by talking about their projection going forward. But, you know, if, if you're looking at this team as being an eight and eight team or nine and seven team at best, then, yeah, you're looking at the middle of the first round, and that could be a place where they can maybe make some moves or if they just stay still, you know, given uh, what other teams' needs and and desires are, they could probably fall into a Trey Lance uh, if they just pick where they they are. So, but uh, what it comes down to is that they need to pick a quarterback next year. They're going to have to pick a quarterback. They're probably going to have to pick, uh, you know, at least – one or two offensive linemen again. They can't bargain shop like they did last year. Uh, and, in, you know, they picked two linemen, but they picked them like in the sixth and seventh round. That's bargain shopping. You got to, you know, get you some quality guys, uh, you know, to fill in at, at, you know, at center guard and tackle one of those spots, all of those spots, really. You got to get some talent in here to on their front line. Or you're not gonna you're not gonna have any success again, any foundation for success going forward for any quarterback that you bring in Chicago. And as as bad as our history is with, with quarterbacks, it doesn't make sense to not at least try to provide all the amenities that you want to provide to a quarterback. You have to at least give them the uh intangibles to succeed because you know, quarterbacks, for whatever reason, seem to underperform here. So you got to at least give them something to lift them up and let them play better than what they, you know, are liable to play as, as Bears, because we just can't see to get a quarterback to come in here and play in their prime and lead us to the promised land. So, uh, again, like I said, just uh, – it's – is the rest of the season is about, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, this was this was a lot of the the thinking before the season as well. This before, because, you know, if you asked me before the season why they did things like have Mitch be the quarterback going into the season, it was because they were setting up a situation where they could save their jobs, Nagy and Pace, such, and they were going to save their jobs by letting Mitch cook and fail in the beginning of the season, yank him, ha- put in foes, like, you know, basically like what happened. You know, they put in foes in game three. He saved the, that game. They were, they went 3-0, wound up going 5-1. and one. He, he stole that game from Tom Brady. They went straight. But since then, it's just <laughs> been all types of failure. And they've shown again how weak they are in adjusting and in in game planning week to week. Then I think that's a naggy that's a naggy failure. He doesn't game plan well. He doesn't adjust well. He doesn't have he doesn't allow his talent to be showcased in ways that they can execute and 
impact games, you know, from week to week. You know, you he he may have he may get a good game out of one guy one week and then the next week just forget about them, not uh, not involve them in the offense at all. And this is no there's no momentum that keeps up from week to week. It, you know, you look at other teams, you know, aside from uh, Allen Robinson, he's the only guy who plays like a star week to week. Everybody else, they just struggle. And they in their their positions, most of them are positions where they have to rely on good game planning, good get, good uh, play calling, and they just can't make it happen. They they, they have they're left uh, without the ball. They're left not holding the ball. They're left without the ball, and they're wondering why they why things can't be different, why things can't be better. And you know, it's, it's, like I said again at the beginning, what well, I said at the beginning of the show is sad, man. It's just it's Groundhog Day. Every week we hit that alarm. Wake up every Sunday. We hit that alarm. Wake up and and you know thinking like could it be different this week and it doesn't it's it's nothing you know we get nothing from it and it's 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 enough to make you just fall out of uh interest with this team again you know this you know in September we've we have this energy we're ready to see the team again and by November it's just blah it's done and you know, this is the type of stuff that that loss a beloved coach like Lovey Smith his job. His last two seasons, he had seasons like this where the Bears started out great, fell apart in the second half of the season, and the Bears, uh, you know, front office at that time they felt that wasn't enough, and they let a guy go who took the team to the Super Bowl. So if you can let a guy like that go, you know, you should be able to let Matt Nagy go for similar. Uh, you know, similar offenses. Last year, the Bears started three and one, fell apart. This year, they start five and one, but they're falling apart, and it looks like they're going to continue to fall apart. You know, that first season is a mirage. That's the mirage. That's the, you know, that's that was that false, uh, you know, uh, source of, of refreshment in the in the desert, and we, you know, we left that trudged ahead looking for something even better that we thought was going to happen. And we haven't seen anything better since we've just been fooled. So, uh, you know, unless anything, unless that, that oasis, you know, you don't want a mirage. You want an oasis. You want us, you want something built into the desert that, uh, is really there. That's going to last that, uh, that continual source of water and replenishment that, uh, you know, that fulfills you and makes you uh, feel good. And the Bears just, they don't have it. We, we're not being led by the right people. And uh, I don't know. Uh, it, could it change? Uh, you, you look at the last seven games of the week of the year. You got five games with uh, that are in division. That's important. Five games in division means it's, it's like equating uh, votes on in the uh, votes in the, uh, you know, the popular vote as opposed to the, uh, uh, they had the, the, the uh, I see, see some more people coming on. I'm getting, I'm getting a little fuzzy mouth now. Thanks uh, for coming on, though, to everybody who's uh, checked me out again this week. But it's like I said, playing games in division is like playing, you know, getting votes in the popular vote as opposed to, to getting votes in the uh, the electoral college, you know, electoral college votes mean more, you know, games in division mean more than games outside the division. So the Bears having five games more in uh, in division gives them a chance to, you know, should they say go four and one in the rest of those games, they have a chance to, you know, they have a chance really to still to win the NFC North, and that's. You know that's really all they could really hope for because they're not going to be in a good position as a wild man because we look at the divisions like the NFC West and the NFC South, and they have you know you have multiple teams in those divisions that are better than them. So you know likely the division the you're gonna have the division winners, of course, the four division winners. The one team has to come out of the NFC East, and 
you know, the Bears are going to be fighting either for a wild card or a or they're going to have to just take the NFC North. And, you know, they can do that possibly if they beat the Packers twice and they beat uh, uh, Minnesota twice. Can we expect them to do that? <laughs> no, you can't really expect them to do that at this point. The Packers have, Packers have shown themselves to be better than the Bears. Uh, Minnesota is playing much better in the last couple of weeks than the Bears have been. And that's going to be the team we see next week, next Monday night. And you look at that team with Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook is probably the most dangerous guy in the league right now. He's been awesome. I, you know, Speaking of someone who's had him on my fantasy team, He's been putting up hella numbers, and, you know, you got to tip your cap to him. At the same time, we've just seen him today go against a dominant runner, a guy who can who can dominate a game and change, you know, and, and really just beat you down with, with a physical running, and they contained him. The Bears defense comes to play every week. They, they're not the other come to play. And they they rise up to the level of competition when they have to, you know. So it, it's not it's not beyond the realm of possibility to see them possibly possibly contain uh, Dalvin Cook next Monday night, uh, and again put themselves in a po- in a potential situation where they can compete with Minnesota, who doesn't have much else beyond Cook. They, you know, you, you're looking at a again, a, a weak quarterback in Minnesota and a sometimey defense, you know, pretty much the same uh, matchup you had today with Tennessee. So, you know, uh, again, despite their momentum that they've had in the past couple of weeks in you know, Minnesota, you know, I, you know, if you want to put that, I don't, I don't think you put them as overwhelming favorites against the Bears. Now, you know, Maybe they steal that game, but again, you're still asking them to win that game. And right after that, they got to play Green Bay on national TV. That may that's usually when they're in that situation, that's too much for them, not, too much to ask of the Bears. And again, you have the two rematch games with them to come, as well as a as a Detroit game and uh, no Detroit game, no, no whatever with that, but. Uh, still, that's you know the that's the the double edged sword thing about division games. You're talking about teams that you know well, but also teams that know you well. So you just got to uh, you know hope that the Bears can you know get get the most that they can out of those games, and hopefully you know go at least four and one in those games. That's really the only way that I could see them possibly even sniffing the playoffs. You you're looking at a ten and sixteen probably at best. You know, you go four and one in those remaining division games and you probably go uh you know split the other two games, which are gonna be two AFC South games between Texas, uh the Texans, the Houston Texans and um uh Jacksonville. Jacksonville, those are gonna be those are the other two remaining games. That's the best I could see the Bears doing. Uh, beyond that, it's just, you know, you, you can't really expect anything from them right now at this point. And that's what it's come down to, you know. But, um, you know, another thing that's just, like I say, it, it's infuriating and frustrating about the Bears is that the lack of momentum, the lack of, you know, football is, is not about where you start in the NFL. It's not about where you start. Is about how you finish, and you know you could you could have all types of five and one starts, three and one, four and one, but if you if you're stumbling right after that, and you're playing down the competition, and over the course of a season, it's going to catch up with you, and it's going to reveal you to be a fake team, a paper team that you know that doesn't have any sort of prospects for it, and in the playoffs and, and going ahead, you have to, you have to keep your game up and, and going into the postseason, And because it's such a, you know, such a, the, the game is such a uh, challenge physically and mentally, you know, you have to be strong and, and be stronger as the season goes forward. You know, you look at the game that's going on now, like 
New England, uh, New Orleans, and Tampa Bay. Both of these teams have had, you know, they stumbled in in some ways coming out the gate, but they're playing better as the season goes along. Tampa Bay, you know, they lost to the Bears a couple of weeks ago. You know, would you rather be Tampa Bay right now? You know, probably not right now because they're getting whooped by the Saints. But coming into this week, would you rather be Tampa Bay or you, would you rather been the Bears? Tampa Bay came into this week six and two already with a better record than the Bears despite losing to the Bears. So the fact that the Bears beat them doesn't really matter. It's not a tiebreaker anymore because Tampa Bay has a better record than the Bears. They're good. Even with this impending loss, they're down 31 to zero, which is, which is wild. I, you, know, you can't, it's hard to expect New Orleans coming in and dominating like that uh, in Tampa Bay. But, uh, you know, New Orleans is going to prove the 6-2. So, and they already beat the Bears, so, it, you know, they didn't think about the Bears. But Tampa came into this game 6-2. and two. They beat the Bears, and they're still going to be 6-3 and three with this loss. So they're ahead of the Bears. But again, we're talking about these wild card games, these wild card spots. Tampa Bay is going to be a game ahead of the Bears regardless of – you know, them when, them having lost to the Bears. So that's the type of stuff that you have to think about when you talk about, uh, you know, playoff seeding and stuff and potential uh, playoff, you know, you know, being, like I said, the playoff hunt. And um, it's, it's just, you know, it, these are teams, again, that are when they – even when they play bad, they show what, wherewithal, they show something – of that comes up within them that allows them to, you know, come back, you know, a little stronger, not, you know, they show something beyond what they, what they, they have shown in the past and the bears just seem to show you less and less each week. And I look at other teams across the league, you know, you look at, you know, teams that are showing wherewithal like the dolphins in the AFC East, that's a team that did a quarter a midseason quarterback change, just like the Bears did. They did it actually in reverse. They switched their old quarterback, you know, their old journeyman quarterback for their the young guy that they drafted to a to a they you know, switched out him with uh you know, put him in and took out Ryan Fitzpatrick. Whereas the Bears, you know, put in a journeyman guy to switch out for their young guy that they drafted who wasn't, you know wasn't doing the job. And, you know, when the, when Miami did that, a lot of people was like, you know, what are you doing? But uh, they proven themselves right in doing that. You know, they are five and three now. They've won, they've won four straight and they're uh, ahead of the Patriots, just like the bills are. And the bills had the most impressive win today beating the, uh, uh, Seattle, and I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. Talk about the Josh Allen MVP stuff, but uh, no, you look at other other streaks in the league. You know, Chiefs have come back from a loss; they won four straight. Uh, Steelers, of course, are the only undefeated team left in the league. There ain't no; they survived Dallas, a pretty good game there. Uh, you know, Ravens had a nice win, comeback win. They came back against in the game itself against. Uh, Indianapolis, and they, uh, you know, proved to six and two, and they got them got themselves back on the win streak after a couple of uh, tough losses that they've had early in the season. Titans again. Titans lost two in a row before today, and they got, like I say, they got themselves back on the win streak. And you know, they, like I say, these are teams that are showing ability to come back. Uh, the Eagles have won two in a row. They're leading the, the NFC East right now because they, you know, because <laughs> somebody has to. But uh, you know, it's interesting just looking at these teams. Nobody in the West, NFC West, has a, a win streak right now. Everybody has either lost their last game or, in the case of the 49ers, lost their last two games. You know, Seahawks again lost at Buffalo. Uh, Cardinals lost that. That was a really uh, you know, I've just seen the highlights from it, but that looks like a game to definitely look back on the uh, Cardinals and in, in, uh, Miami Dolphins. And again, these are two teams who, again, they got to the line for the young quarterbacks 
They got to the buffet line and they picked well uh, with Tua in Miami and uh, Kyler Murray and in, in, uh, in Arizona. They they actually picked some <laughs> something good instead of the mystery meat. And um, I say Vikings won two in a row. They're they're kind of getting up there. I think both of them and the Lions are three and five. I think they're much better three and five than the Lions are. Of course, they just beat the Lions today, so you know, help improve that. And uh, you no, know, they could very well be four and five going into. Uh, I would say actually, actually uh, next Monday night they'll be three and five going into the Bears game. So they could be four and five coming out very well coming out of that Bears game, Bears will be five and five, and they'll be really the Vikings will be in a position right then to leapfrog the Bears, which is I think a lot of people are expecting that. Uh and again you talk about look at the South, the remaining division, and you look at win streaks, you know, everybody's got a win streak in that division except for the Panthers who have, you know, the Bears were able to take advantage of them uh, a couple weeks ago. But the uh Panthers have lost a lot of close games. Uh, they really aren't a bad team. You look at the Falcons, who've won a two in a row. They're three and six. They've won two in a row. And I would argue, like, I almost would, you know, you, you can make an argument for wanting to be the Falcons more than the Bears right now. If you, you, know, you really could, in spite of the Bears having, you know, beat them and, you know, embarrassed them like they did in that come from behind when, you know, who would you rather have as your quarterback now, right? Matt Ryan or uh, Nick Foles? You know, who would you rather have as your coach right now, Raheem Morris or Matt Nagy? You know, again, Atlanta's a team that made a coaching, a necessary coaching decision midseason. They knew that they knew that the guy that they had wasn't getting the job done. They got rid of him. The only thing about that with the Bears again would be you it would be pace trying to <laughs> make Nagy out to be the uh the uh the source of blame when really is everything's like I said before, is everything stems from Pace's inability to build the team up, the, the offense in particular. And um so, like I said, Falcons are three and six. They're not likely to be a playoff team, but they're probably going to win more games in the second half of the season than the Bears will. You know, it's, it's very likely. And the Saints, uh, Saints have won four in a row. They're going to improve that and make that five in a row. They're going to have a six and two record coming out of tonight. They're, they're just a dangerous team, man. They're always <laughs> they always find a way to compete. And, you know, no, no matter how old and creaky that Breeze, Breeze gets, you know, he he, he's, he has something to offer. He, every year he has something to offer. And I don't know how much longer that's going to be the case, but he still has something to offer. They still have weapons around him. They still have more weapons to get with Michael Thomas coming into the fold eventually. You know, and you know, just got to figure them to be a dangerous team in the NFC going forward. And the Buc- Buccaneers, as inconsistent as they may seem to be at times, they're going to have three losses, uh, you know, in in their first nine games. But those, you know, they still have a lot of talent. They still have Tom Brady. They still have good coaching. So, you know, as bad as they've looked today, you know, you got to figure on any given week that they could beat anybody in the NFC. The NFC looks very much up for grabs. You know, you look at the fact that the Seahawks are pretty much a one-dimensional team, and the Packers again they they can float the turd too, <laughs> uh, in in any given week. You know, the Bears being a winning team in the NFC sort of tells you uh, a lot about the narrative there in that conference overall. You know, Bears shouldn't be a winning team in the NFC this year. They they should really be uh, further back in the in the standings, but they're far enough back right now. Six and two, like I say, six and two Seahawks, six and two Packers. Cardinals are better. Rams are better. Uh, you know, they beat the Bucks, but the Bucks are better. Saints are better. You know, so whatever, man. And you know, the Eagles could probably knock them off at this time too if they wanted to. So, uh, you know, Bears are only playing the Giants in the division in that division this year, fortunately, and they already beat them. So, 
you know, that's uh, pretty much the overall outlook. I'll just, I'll, uh, about to wrap up things, but uh, since I put it on, like I said, I went a little bit further than I wanted to with the bad stuff, but I'm uh, just get some props to Josh Allen and the Bills. You know, they had the, you know, you look at the game of the day, you know, they took down um, Seattle, what was it, 44-34, I believe, up in in uh, Buffalo. You know, it was like the most points that, yeah, 44-34, 44 points, like the most points that Seahawks have given up since 2009. Uh, Bills haven't scored that, mo- that many points in quite a while. They haven't had this sort of start, 7-2 and two start. Uh, since 1993, the last Super Bowl they went to, man. So it's a lot has changed up there. And when you look at Josh Allen, man, he's definitely in the mix for the MVP right now. He went head to head with uh, MVP mainstay competitor in Russell Wilson and out dueled him. You know, you could say, well, Seattle's defense is is not that great, but you know, when it comes to MVP especially when it comes to quarterbacks and MVP, you're just talking about the numbers. You just got to put up the numbers. It ain't about who you play to get those numbers. It's, it's how you perform, how those cum- cumulative numbers, how they add up towards the end of the year and, you know, what they make you look like. And, you know, Allen's going to be probably a, he's going to be at least a 4,000 yard uh, guy for passing. He's going to have a lot of touchdowns, a lot more touchdowns than interceptions. His numbers are going to be right. He uh, completed 31 or 38 today. So he's, he's, uh, he's improved. He's, he's a much more accurate passer. He makes less mistakes. He's improved in the way over his time as an NFL player that we would have liked to see Mitch Trubisky uh, improve here in Chicago. But, you know, we saw at the beginning of this season that he was not giving us the same things that a Josh Allen is giving his team or even and definitely not what a, you know, Patrick Mahomes, who a big part of Patrick Mahomes' story, he's willing, he's admit, admitted as much to the media that, you know, he he doesn't, he didn't know in his first couple of years how to read defenses at the pro level. And he still was able to go out and perform like an MVP those first couple of years. He's won a Super Bowl, and he's you know he's the best best talent in the league, the most important quarterback in the league. And he's just getting to learn how defenses react to him in order to for him to adjust in the way that he wants to. You know, he's basically done. Basically, he's done what he's done so far in his career off of his instinct and his athleticism and that was stuff that we thought we was going to see out of Mitch like you know we thought we was gonna see, he was a big athlete they you know Pace thought that at least he thought he was a big athlete he's gonna you know be this sort of modern guy that was multifaceted and could run and can do all these things and throw the ball deep and you know <laughs> it's, it's just when you look at Mahomes and you look at now a Josh Allen, you see just how much we fallen behind because of that one decision. And it, again, it only takes that one decision, and that it takes that one decision to set your team back a decade, and it takes that one decision for you to lose your job. And that's where uh, that's where the Bears are, and that's where Matt now. Uh, Ryan Pace is. And unfortunately, that's what everybody else is on that team. So uh, that's it. <laughs> Wrap it up. We're coming up on 10 o'clock. I can't believe I've done about an hour. And uh, mostly out of frustration, mostly out of, uh, you know, just had these things going through my head all day. Like, you know, how could this be? How can this situation be? And, um, you know, I'm I'm not sure I'll be back <laughs> uh, over the next couple of Sundays. I'm I'm trying to cook some things up, some different angles of of how to cover this team, some different people to talk to, uh, other reporters and stuff, and uh, stuff related to this team that 
may be interesting, but doesn't have to do exactly with, you know, what we're seeing on the field, you know, if that makes any sense to y'all. But uh, we'll try to get some some interesting stuff going over uh, the bye week and everything. And um, I say just, you know, if anything, just share in, <laughs> in the struggle with – with some other people who are knowledgeable about the team and can uh, speak, you know, speak intelligently about the team, even you know more intelligently than I. <laughs> but uh, you know, hey, so it's it is what it is at this point. You know, don't don't let it uh, affect y'all too much. It's too much that's uh, you know that's real out here. That is. Uh, you know that we 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 can enjoy the transfer of power in Washington. You know, just keep that in mind that it's going to be a new day in this country. Uh, as far as that goes, you know, keep uh, you know, keep perspective that uh, life is beautiful and you know precious. And you know, we lose a person like Alex Trebek tonight, and you know, keep in mind that you know the the great things that a person like that did, and you know, maybe you can do something great too if you put your mind to it, you know. And uh yeah, just just think of something bigger and something better than <laughs> the Bears. Cause, you know, when they when they're on, you know, check them out and see if the see what the score is. And, you know, if 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 you're not satisfied by what you see, turn it off, man. The, you know, cool thing, even though this Sunday is like probably gonna be the last great weather Sunday for the next few months. You know, at least the next two Sundays, you know, we'll we'll have them to ourselves because, uh, like I said, they play next Monday and then the Sunday after that they'll be off. So, you know, and even the, even after that, there'll be a Sunday night game. So it'll be you'll have the Sunday next three Sunday afternoons we'll have to ourselves. So, you know, we can do we can all do something productive <laughs> in, over the the time and space of the you know. You know, enjoy maybe enjoy loved ones if you're not in person over the phone. You know, got to be mindful of that. And uh, you know, or like I say, just go out and and breathe some air and you know, be responsible again. Be uh, give people that space and but uh, you know, enjoy the outdoors or something. You know, I don't know, or or just watch some better football f- <laughs> from other teams uh, across the NFL and not have to worry about the one here in Chicago. So. That's pretty much it for now, though. Uh, past 10 o'clock now. Again, the uh, Sunday night game, not very competitive, but uh, impressive to see Drew Brees in New, in New Orleans do what they do. And, uh, you know, so I, see a lot, I think I've seen some people on, online, too, enjoy uh, Tampa Bay getting whooped like this, a little shot and throw it there. You know, I don't really engage in that, but uh, not with Tampa Bay, at least, but, you know. Hey, it is what it is. Oh, Jameis getting some play too now. We we get some Jameis on top of this uh, nice cherry on the ice in there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hang up and uh, watch and see how Jameis does. You know, maybe he can fool somebody. Maybe he'll fool the Bears into giving him a, a starting job next year. They may can't do any worse than what they're doing now. But uh, yeah, keep uh keep uh in touch with us. All our platforms again scrolling on the bottom. Uh, you know, sh- uh, show us love and we'll show it right back, y'all. And uh, we'll be back sometime in the in the next week or so with another uh, special edition here on uh, here on Facebook as well as uh, on YouTube. We have our shows going up every week. Uh, Second City Sports. Uh, three and out, recapping this game more succinctly uh, with Ryan Bukovetsky. Uh in the scope, uh, running with war. We got a, you know, whether we got new stuff up, we got our playlist, you know, whether we got something new up or not, you know, check out our playlist. You know, you, you know, I, I, I can tell by the numbers you haven't seen all of our videos, so. You know, look through our videos. You might see somebody on there that you like, a, you know, a, a, a media person or some an athlete who you like, who you know we might have talked to. You know, if you like, if you like uh, 
you see someone interesting on the description, give it a click and, and see what we do with them, you know. I think you'll like it. But uh, for now, I am out. Kyle Mees, uh, follow me online, War uh, work underscore right, W-R-K underscore W-R-T on Twitter, K-Mean on uh, Instagram. And uh, I'll be kicking it just like uh, as as usual. <laughs> you know, come hang out with me, whatever you uh, feel like it. All right? Enjoy your week. Be safe. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. All right?